So uh, I've had lots of firsts this last two weeks. I preached my first Christmas Eve service ever, my first Christmas Day service on four hours sleep. And now for the very first time, I'm going to preach to you the first sermon or the first service of the year. And not only the first service of the year, but it also just happens to be on January 1st. And so uh, a lot of firsts. I got my first appointment this last year to St. Matthew, which was a new beginning for me. It was a new, uh, a new branch in my personal and my professional life. And then today, we're sitting here today celebrating and worshiping and enjoying each other's fellowship on the first day of a brand new year. And we're not alone. Uh, new beginnings are springing up in the minds and the hearts and the lives of people all over the world today. New plans, new hopes, new dreams. Everybody's thinking, yeah, this year, this is going to be the year. This is going to be the year I lose these 60 pounds that I gained when I was pregnant with my son 33 years ago. This is going to be the year. This is going to be the year. This is going to be the year that goes down in history for the way the world changes and we love, begin to love each other and take care of each other and take care of the environment. This is it, folks. This is the year. And we draw this line between last year and this year. And we promise ourselves the most excellent promises that we are going to be different. It's as if somewhere in this 24-hour period, something miraculous is going to take place in our lives that will change everything. Something mystical will appear all of a sudden, and we're going to be different today than we were yesterday. Now, the last few sermons I've preached have been about, really about creating space in your life for peace and for God. They've been about setting aside sacred time to spend just with yourself. I've preached about the beloved community, about the beloved child, about just being and basking in the love of our Creator. And as we step boldly into 2023, I want to continue that thread of creating practices of self-care in our lives. I don't want us to have another, another year like the one we just had, or the last three years, actually. You remember the article I read to you a few weeks ago? I just want to remind you, Naomi Holt, a psychologist, wrote this that I shared with you in that sermon. We crawled into 2022 still carrying shock, trauma, grief, heaviness, and disbelief. It was a year where we put so much stress on ourselves to catch up and get everything done that we hadn't been able to get done in the last two and a half years because of COVID. And we put all this pressure on ourselves to get out more, to do more, to fix things, to go places, to get busy again with our lives. And folks, I got to tell you, all that pressure we put on ourselves just added to the trauma of what living with COVID left us with. And so as we begin this new year, I want us to spend time re restoring our relationship with God with ourselves and with each other. We need to just spend time being. 2023 can be that year where we just bask in the love of God, where we remember that we are God's beloved children and this, folks, is God's beloved community. So today, as I thought about what to say to you, um, actually, all week, I've been trying to figure out what, what am I going to say. This, this could be the most important sermon of the year. It's the first sermon of the year. Like, you're not going to hear 51 more. Putting pressure on myself, right? So I just tried to start breathing and listening and opening my heart and my mind 
And I listened to a podcast this week with Brene Brown. You've heard me say that name many times. And with Father Richard Rohr. Well, those are two of the people who I read a lot of the things that they write. And I, I just, uh, man, it's just so moving and impactful in my life. Well, they actually talked to each other this week. I, I was in heaven, right? Yeah, Brene Brown has a podcast called Unlocking Ourselves. It's on Spotify, and I encourage you. Um, but she is, uh, Brene Brown is a recovering alcoholic. She's been sober for 26 years. And Father Richard Rohr wrote a book called Breathing Underwater, Spirituality and the Twelve Steps. And they gathered together to talk about it. And it was just so cool. I've listened to it about five times, I think. And I hear something new every time. But one of the things I heard this week is a quote from Father Rohr out of his book. And it says this. When religion does not move people to the mystical or the non-dual level of consciousness, it is more a part of the problem than the solution. Religion solidifies, angers, creates enemies, and is almost always exclusionary of the most recent definition of sinner. At this level, it is largely incapable of its supreme task of healing, reconciling, forgiving, and peacemaking. And after that quote was read, Brene Brown asked him, do you ever wonder if churches everywhere are gathering every week and saying to each other, now don't forget, don't forget our supreme task is healing. And I listened to those words from Father Rohr and I was inspired. It, just this one part of that quote, the supreme task of the church, of all of religion, is healing, reconciling, forgiving, and peacemaking. Now, I'm determined, I am determined not to live in chaos this year. If you saw my desk at the hospital, you would, you would say, thank God, Mary, it's about time. I'm determined not to live in chaos this year. My life needs focus. And I look at my bookshelves and I look at the podcasts that I listen to and the, the little posters I have and all the screenshots I take on my phone because of all the cool things I read on Facebook, right? I'm not the only one, am I, that has a whole folder full of phone, phone photos, right, of cool things that other people have said. There's all these things, all these sources for sermons and for discussions and for conversations and man, it is overwhelming sometimes. And I know I bring a lot of different things here when I speak to you. And so in 2023, I just want to calm down. I just want to be able to focus because the life of this church needs focus as well. And so I want us this year to focus on this one phrase. Our supreme task is healing. And it's creating a space for healing. Our own healing and the healing of our neighbors. Now, Rohr also mentions reconciling, forgiving, and peacemaking in his book. But he says in this paragraph in this book, the supreme task of the church is healing. I believe the other three are necessary for healing. And so we're going to talk about forgiveness today as the first step towards healing. Because without forgiveness, there is no healing. And there is no peace. And there is no reconciliation. But the trouble is, folks, we walked into this brand new year today carrying those same shadows that we had with us yesterday. And we brought all that baggage with us. All those heartaches and all those sorrows, all those bad habits, all, those, all that trauma. We brought it all with us as if flipping the page of the calendar is somehow going to create a miracle in our lives. But for forgiving ourselves, forgiving us, looking in the mirror and forgiving that human in the mirror, that's what comes first. And guess what? 
That's the hardest step. It's harder for us to forgive ourselves than it is for, to forgive someone else who has wronged us. We are harder on ourselves than anyone else could ever be. And so I want to invite you today to have compassion. Not just for your neighbors, not just for the world, but for yourselves. I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to realize, as Brene Brown says, compassion is fueled by understanding and by accepting that we're all made of strength and struggle. No one is immune to pain or suffering. No one is immune to pain or suffering. Not even that beautiful face looking back at you in the mirror is immune to pain or to suffering. We have to start by forgiving ourselves. We have to begin to live like we are worthy of the very thing that Jesus Christ told us to do, which was to forgive each other as he has forgiven us. Now, I preached a sermon on the fourth Sunday of Advent. It was the 18th of December. It was seven days until Christmas, a week. And now we're standing here. Two weeks have gone by. Christmas is already seven days gone. Can you believe just last Sunday was Christmas? Seven sacred days have gotten away from me this week. 168 hours. Because you know what I didn't do? I didn't put it on my calendar. I didn't set aside a sacred moment every day to spend with God. I didn't set aside an hour or 30 minutes or even 15 minutes just to take care of myself. I did my little perfunctory things. I pray when I get up. I pray before I eat a meal. I pray at night. I pray when I think of one of you or what you're going through, I pray for you. I have alarms that go off on my phone that tell me it's time to pray for this. It's time to pray for that. I, you're grinning at me, right? But I'm going to tell you right now, without those alarms, uh, days and days could go by. And I wouldn't know what was going on or where we were. But I missed these seven days. I missed the sacredness of these seven days to disengage from the chaos and the madness and just be with my Lord. I didn't spend any time this week living like the beloved baby of God. I preached to you about that 14 days ago and I've already, I've already stopped doing what I've asked you to do. Folks, it's in those sacred moments. It's in those moments where we let love saturate our lives and our hearts. It's in those sacred moments where we breathe in God that we learn to forgive ourselves. And so to be a place of healing, to live in a condition of being healed, we've got to start by forgiving ourselves. And then once we get ready to forgive ourselves, once we have begun that process, and let me tell you, it's not going to be a one-time thing, okay? Please don't think I'm saying that. It's, this is not a pill you take in your well, all right? This is forgiveness. It, it's going to happen uh, probably with me. I'm figuring every breath I take. It's okay, Mary, I forgive you. It's okay, Mary, I forgive you. I'll be talking to myself a lot, so don't interrupt me. But as you go through this process of forgiving yourself, you've also got to spin it around then and start to forgive each other. Forgive others in your lives. Now, I went to a concert this week. I did practice a little self-care by going to a concert. I went to see Trans-Siberian Orchestra. And let me just tell you, I'm going to check out next year for group tickets because we have got, if you have not seen that show, it is incredible. It started off a little bit crazy. I thought, mm, I'm not so sure about this. And then I had one of the most spiritual experiences I've had in my lifetime, sitting in that American Airlines Center watching that group. It was just incredible. 
But one of the songs they sing, Oh, come let us adore him. You know that song. We just sang that last week, right? Oh, come let us adore him. Folks, I got to tell you, it occurred to me sitting there, you can't adore God if you're holding anything in your heart against someone else. You're not really adoring your Savior if you have something that you are holding on to, some anger or some bitterness or some resentment against someone else or something else that God adores. And you know what? You're always looking at someone or something that God adores. Always. So here's what I've decided. I'm going to start this year today publicly. I'm going to start by saying, Mary, I forgive you. I want you to practice it with me, okay? For real. But don't say Mary. <laughs> okay? That'll come later on this year. I promise you there will be an instance where you have to look at me and say, Mary, I forgive you. But right now, I just want you to, I want you to out loud or, or in your heart, wherever you want to do, I just want you to just stop for a minute and breathe in the love of God and say, say it with me, Mary, I forgive you. And then realize, too, that we have to forgive each other. We have to recognize that in our broken humanity, there's still something holy and something sacred. There's something inside of even those people around us that we cannot comprehend what they're doing or why they're doing it. There is something inside of them sacred, something that only God can reach. Now, the other thing I did this week, I listened to, I did some chores yesterday at my house. I listened to some music. Uh, it's a young man, his name is Parker Millsap. He is from Oklahoma. He sings this, uh, I don't know, it's kind of this, they call it rockabilly. I, I don't know, it's kind of country, kind of, I, I, it's just great music and I love it. Uh, but anyway, he sings a song called Please Forgive Me. And I thought these lyrics, I, for, I had to stop what I was doing yesterday because these lyrics, uh, for the first time, I think I really listened to them. But anyway, I just want to share a few of them with you. It says, I've got shadows in hiding way down inside me, and sometimes they work to the surface. In just the right lighting, you can see them beside me, but I swear I don't let them out on purpose. Excuse me from the table, but I'm just not able to swallow because my throat's all in a knot. Like something is broken, don't mind my choking on the words I should never have thought. I've got rooms full of questions, quite a collection, but answers, I have only a few. Well, I could use your help clearing off these shelves and maybe find just a little bit of truth. Please forgive me for the sinner I am. Treat me like a child as I'm only half grown. Please forgive me because I stepped on the line in the sand and now I'm trying just as hard as I can. Now there are people in my life there are people in this room, and I need to look at you, and I need to say, please forgive me when the traumas of my past manifest themselves in my life right now as anger and as resentment. Please forgive me when I am impatient. Please forgive me and help me, as it says in this question, in this song, I mean, Please help me, help me clear off these shelves and find a little bit of truth. And this is not some sermon I'm preaching to you. I'm asking you 
to join me this year, to make this a place of healing. Because healing, that's our purpose. It's our purpose to live loved and to live healed and to create a space for broken and heartbroken. For people who have just been beaten and battered by life, we've got to make a space for them. And it all starts, the healing all starts with forgiveness. Now, the next time I preach, and I have to tell you, this is the fourth, fourth sermon you've heard me preach in a row, and I'm sorry. <laughs> Four in a row. Whew, I don't know how Max has done this for 40 years, being responsible for all this. And he didn't have backup for a long time. I mean, thank God, Harry's been here for years. Before Harry, we had another lay leader um, who helps with some things, but man, I'm telling you, when you guys see Max, I want you, I want you to, to tell him how much you appreciate him and how much you love him for what he's doing. So the next time I preach, we'll be talking about this reconciling and peacemaking thing as part of healing as well. But in the meantime, because it'll probably be about a month before I preach here again, maybe it may only be seven days. I don't know. We'll see how he feels. All right? In the meantime, I want you to practice this forgiveness thing. I want you to get up in the morning and say, you know what? Man, I love you and I forgive you. And every time you feel that guilt or that anger at yourself for doing something wrong or saying something wrong or stepping somewhere you're not supposed to be stepping, I want you to say, hey, you know what? I forgive you. I forgive you. Let's do better next time, okay? It's all right. Because if, as we forgive ourselves, we're leaving that baggage and those shadows and that garbage behind us and the trauma begins to heal. And so don't carry those bags anymore. Carry that love and that forgiveness in your heart. It starts with forgiveness. Pray with me, please. Gracious God, we come to you today on our knees before you. We are begging for your forgiveness and for your strength as we attempt to live this year basking in your love and creating a space of healing, both for ourselves, for our neighbors, and for those that we love. And God, as we continue in this service and as we spend time remembering that last supper, help us to stay ever focused on just being present in this moment. We thank you for your love and for your mercy today. And we pray all of these things to you, God, because we know that you're listening. Amen. Guess what? We have another hymn to sing. Max had us, he had us busy singing today. Let me just tell you. Here's Shannon. <laughs>